That's right. It's very interesting, Julian, to compare the different perceptions right now because obviously oftentimes perception turns into reality. So today we wanted to uh, turn things around and also get the Chinese side in perspective from journalists coming from uh, China to cover what is happening here at the APEC summit. So with us, we're very fortunate to have her here, is Liu Xing. She is quite a famous journalist and show host, podcast host um, from China. And your show is on CGT. TV or CGTN, that yes. is the network, and your show is called The Point with Liu Xing. Right? Thank you very much, Christine. Yes, it is a great pleasure to be on ABC7 here in the Bay Area, my very first time here in Western Co West Coast TV, so I'm very excited, and thank you for the opportunity. I feel a kinship to you already. You host a show, I host a show, yeah. getting answers, um, and we just talk to people. We try to find out what people are thinking, yeah. and this being your first time here, I'll start with this. What is your impression of San Francisco so far? Um, I haven't had time to take it in because <laughs> I've been, been so busy. A lot yeah. has happened. Actually, we just drove from Los Angeles to San Francisco yesterday at night, and we plunged into working, and we arrived at the hotel late. So um, I, w I, will, I will take some time off. But I have to say, uh, we're in an area where there were a lot of homeless people. So unfortunately, by now, um, I haven't seen the full picture of San Francisco, but I will do. I'm, I believe San Francisco is a nice place with the uh, you know areas of uh, more homeless people but you know also, also nicer areas I'm right. sure. you mentioned seeing some homeless and that's been one of the struggles for the city mm -hmm. I'm very curious what the impression is in China uh, in reports and in the media and what people think in terms of when they think of San Francisco mm -hmm. when they think of California mm -hmm. um, what comes to mind well, I want to bring you this picture. I prepared this picture because it's a very special one. And I don't think many people have seen that. Oh, is that Xi Jinping in San Francisco a long time ago as a young man? Yeah, this was 38, uh, 38 years ago when he first visited um, the United States. He was stopping over in San Francisco on his way to Ohio to meet farmers there. He was still a junior official in north in northern china in a small town mm. and you can see he was very young mm. <laughs> back then Indeed. and and he mentioned this visit to um, governor newsom when he was meeting when they were meeting in beijing yeah. during governor newsom's meeting and he said this is um, his very first stopover in the united states was san francisco mm. so i thought that's a very personal touch you know when you when you go to a place the first impression is always very very important and from that picture and the fact that he was recalling this visit this visit 38 years later to the Californian governor I think that's a very important message to the American people and to the Chinese people that personally he has good um, will towards San Francisco towards America towards the American people that's what that's why I, I think it is it is important that I bring this image and show it to the people of San Francisco that the Chinese president remembers this city and has a good memory everybody has a good memory at the Golden Gate Bridge that part is certainly true I will go there too. you should you should um, but I do want to ask you does it feel like there is a new uh, feeling new page a new chapter because as you know I don't think it's a secret on both sides yeah. of the Pacific yeah. uh, tensions have been ratcheting up over the last few years for a variety of reasons um, a lot of it is geopolitical but also the pandemic and um, and I wonder if you feel like the headlines coming out of China now sound a little different towards this APEC summit you mean the headlines about America yes Absolutely, yes. I think and the relationship and and whether it's friend or foe. Yeah, well, I think it is very obvious there has been a, a, a series of efforts by both sides to pave to lead to this point where the two presidents can meet after almost exactly one year when they met in Bali, Indonesia. Because in China, um, as President Xi has said um, many times that there is a thousand reason to build this relationship, to make this relationship work, and there is no reason for this relationship not to work because we are the two largest economies and how many jobs for both sides that this can create. Why don't we, you know? Well, you mentioned the reasons why 
it should work, which Biden uh, iterated today, right, saying uh, we can compete, but we don't have to be enemies. Uh, and President Xi said, you know, the world is big enough for the two of us. But in terms of there being reasons to for it to not work, there those exist at, as well, uh, right? Um, and, you know, Taiwan is just one of them, but there are other issues as well. So my question to you is, how are, I guess, is it the feeling that there are places where we can work together and we will and other things we just let them be or do those things still seem insurmountable um, and get in the way of any potential cooperation on economics or sustainability or environmental issues yeah well it's just like two people dealing with each other if if we try to get along and if we believe that our relationship is very important not just for the two of us but for people around us what do we do mm -hmm. are we going to keep ta you know getting tangled getting wrapped up mm -hmm. by the issues that we can't change for the moment different values probably different systems different personality but if there are things we can work on why don't we work on that but I think the problem the difference that I saw from this morning's uh, meeting between the opening remarks between the two presidents is very important and I want to repeat that because the the exact wording makes a lot of difference and I wrote it down President Biden said we have to ensure that competition does not veer into conf conflict and we also have to manage the competition responsibly but president she said I am still of the view that major country competition is not the prevailing trend of current times and cannot solve the problems facing China and the United States or the world at large so it's not about how we solve the difference or whether we shelve the differences but we find a way to understand the nature of our relationship is it a, is it one that's defined by competition or is it one defined by Developed by cooperation, we can work together. I mean, or both. Um, I want to ask you though, because well. <laughs> our viewers are very interested in, um, in terms of you know media coverage. You see here, there are a lot of uh, supporters and protesters. They get to be on the streets. They get to speak their minds. In terms of coverage in China, um, when people think, is there actual? government control can you report on what you want can you say what you want on your program um, what do you tell people I tell people what I see and I say what I believe in that's how I do my job and you don't worry about censorship well I, I say things that I believe in so and I and I've been working in the Chinese TV for 25 years and I've seen the country transform from uh, a poor and backward place to where it is now where United States is feeling threatened what do I have to worry about I mean China must have done something right including the the, the media the news and I think that's the question people should ask how come a country that America sees is not free is controlled is authoritarian how come it's doing something right? It lifted 800 uh, million people. That's more than twice the population of the United States out of poverty, out, absolute poverty, I should say. How did China manage that? I mean, let's not bogged, be bogged down by the questions that you, we can't answer, but look into the solutions, how we find to address our problems and learn from each other, maybe. I think that has been addressed in multiple forms, and that's the solution folks are seeking. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us, Liu Xing. Very interesting. Thank you. I, I, and, and please, go visit the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> I will after this. Thank you so All much right. for giving me that platform. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. All right. And, and by the way, um, I will use this this clip on, on my show as well. All right. There you go. Getting answers uh, in China as well. Julian, how do you like that? We're taking the show on the road, Kristen. I uh, like it a lot and especially enjoyed that uh, young image of President Xi there uh, that was presented to you. Very interesting to see.